so we will look at domain of some of the important functions so first function we will look at is the simplest function fx is equal to c so it's a constant function and it is defined so the domain is whole of r okay so if we have a function let's say like this this is the x axis this is the y axis and we have fx is equal to c okay so this is fx is equal to c so it is constant everywhere so its domain is the whole of the real line number okay next one is we have f of x is equal to let's say log of x to the base e so this function is defined so it looks like something like so this is log of x okay and we know that this is approaching minus infinity okay and this one is 1 so log x to the base is defined for all x greater than 0 okay and then what else so the domain of log x is 0 to infinity and its range is what so range is minus infinity to plus infinity okay so that is the case now let's look at another function fx is equal to e to the power of x okay so this is now defined for all x okay x equal to r for every x it is defined and its value is what it's from so e to the power of minus infinity we see it is 0 and then e to the power of 0 is equal to 1 and e to the power of infinity is infinity so we see its range its range is 0 to plus infinity okay so it's 0 to plus infinity okay now let's look at another function some of the trigonometric functions okay so let's look at trigonometric functions like f of x is equal to sine of x this sine of x we know that okay the sine function so it's something like this so this is 0 this is pi 2 pi this is pi by 2 so this if we see so it is the domain so the range first let's look at the range so range is from minus 1 to plus 1 okay so this function varies from minus 1 to plus 1 and the domain is whole of the real number okay the domain is whole of real number and its range is minus 1 to plus 1 similarly let's look at f of x is equal to cos of x so this function is now again its range we know is minus 1 to plus 1 so cos of 0 is 1 cos of pi by 2 is 0 cos pi is minus 1 so if we plot so it will be something like so cos 0 is 1 and cos of pi by 2 is 0 so it is something like this and cos of minus pi by 2 is 0 and so from here so this is pi 
and then so this way you see is the function cos of x okay so cos of x also the domain is whole of real number then we come to tan of x okay so tan of x is interesting to calculate so it's something like we can write it as sin of x by cos of x now this function is defined only if cos of x is not equal to 0 and we know that okay cos x when is it 0 so cos x is 0 for pi by 2 we know it is 0 and so for pi by 2 it's 0 for 3 pi by 2 so if we add pi by pi to it so for pi by 2 plus pi so 3 pi by 2 also it's 0 this way also if you subtract pi so this is 0 so for all vertical lines so it is pi by 2 plus m pi where m is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc so it becomes pi m plus half so for all these values this cos x is 0 and hence tan x is defined for r minus 2m plus 1 by 2 pi okay for these numbers it's defined where m is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc okay so this is about tan x and what is the range okay so the range for tan x is what will be its range so if we see so its range is whole of r okay it can go from minus infinity to plus infinity okay so that's the because what happens tan of 0 is 0 and if you see tan of pi by 2 so it's infinity so in fact between 0 so tan 0 so it's 0 and pi by 2 so it's infinity so it goes something like this okay so this is tan of x and from what happens then from pi by 2 to pi what happens to tan x so now also pi by 2 to pi so if we see from here so sin x is positive but cos x becomes negative so it goes there and it now moves from minus infinity to 0 because at pi sin of pi by cos of pi so it is 0 okay so it moves like this okay so then we see that range of tan x is whole of r so next class we will learn about the range of the inverse trigonometric functions. Thanks a lot.